Good morning, friends and family. Um, I just really wanted to share some things with you guys this morning. I've been in a period of revival um, in my spirit, my soul. Um, not that it was dead, but it just needed some um, reconstruction. <laughs> and, you know, I've been walking with the Lord for 11 years. Um, and I've had, you know, a lot of ups and I've had a lot of downs and gone through different spiritual phases. I've learned a lot of different things that, um, you know, the Holy Spirit has taught me along the way. I've learned how to pray. I've learned how to, um, hear the voice of God and, um, walked in many different things that have developed me as a leader and, um, have taught me, you know, things to do and things not to do. Um, but over the last three years, um, I just kind of fell off the wagon. And um, I don't really want to go into all detail about, you know, what happened or why, because there's a lot that's involved. There's a lot of dynamics that are involved in it. But the gist of it is I became tired in, in, of doing good. And um, so I decided to just really just take a break, I guess, from being strong and committed. And um, even though I didn't, didn't feel like I was seeing... Um, Sometimes I just didn't feel like I was seeing things I was praying for, and it got frustrating. I got discouraged, and I just kind of quit. And um, which is odd because prior to that, I had seen a lot, a lot in my prayer life, and I've seen a lot of healings in my prayer life, and I've seen God move due to my prayer life. And um, but for some reason, I got I had a lot going on. I was in school, and I had a lot going on in my life, so I got really distracted. Um, you know, and all around me and begin to hear um, a lot of voices uh, people's voices um, people a lot of people were speaking into my life um, the enemy was speaking my flesh was rising up and it just kind of started to drown out the voice of God like what you know, what which which voice was God's what what's real what's the truth you know and um, it was almost like a test of to see how far I could um, pull away from goodness to see how God would respond to me as far as, you know, grace or, you know, what was okay. And, um, and I don't regret any of it because honestly, it really taught me a lot that it is dangerous to pull away from God. It's dangerous to pull away from the things of God, the commitment to God, um, the anointing over my life, like, fell off. Um, I lost uh, the ability to see the glory of God over me and my life and things around me. And I just got so, um, just started grieving, you know, the place that I had been in my life and that I had allowed the enemy to um, um, mess with my beliefs and what I already knew, you know, I already knew what I knew. I already knew, um, how to stand firm. I already knew that I had a solid rock that I was standing on. My feet were planted firmly in, and I, I shifted them. Those choices that I made wasn't that nobody else, um, caught, you know, it was choices that I made. And, but, you know, environment and your, you know, people you surround yourself with, um, um, like minds, you know, that all plays a role in your life and your growth. And anyhow, um, so I just wanted to kind of come and be transparent and be honest about uh, my life. You know, I dipped into, um, back into alcohol and um, I'm going to be honest. I like, you know, I like wine. I like to have a drink. And um, so I wanted to, you know, a lot of you know that I've you know, went through uh, rehab years ago, <laughs> and um, uh, many, you know, 
classes of AA and um, counseling and all kinds of stuff to help get my life back in order, um, which were great tools. And but for some reason, I just thought, oh, you know, you know, Jesus made wine, and um, surely it's okay to have a few glasses of wine. Well, Kelly can't have a few glasses of wine; it's kind of all or nothing. But so I just um, I played with that for several years and um, really it was a hindrance um, it became the hindrance um, you know allowing sin back in my life and I opened the door and when I op when you open a door when you open a window it gives you know foot to the enemy and then the enemy wreaks havoc in your life so you it's so important that you keep that door shut and no matter what and so um, we can't just live any way. I mean, God's grace is amazing. Thank God for his grace and his mercy on our life because I mean, he, it is that great. But what I'm here to tell you is we cannot experience the fullness of God. We're not going to go to the fullness of our calling. We're not going to be completely fulfilled unless we completely consecrate ourselves to God. And the things of our flesh have got to die and, um, so anyway, I, I just started crying out to God because I realized that I had been so off track and, and I had missed my relationship with God and just missed the time that him and I had spent together and seeing his glory and just walking hand in hand daily, not having a platform, not having a position in ministry, you know, all of that. I just said, I don't even, I don't want that. You know, I chased after that for a while and. And um, I, I, I don't want that. You know, I just want to walk hand in hand, you know, like the streets and in my in my job and nursing and just be obedient to whatever God tells me to do. You know? And so, but I wanted to chase after him um, in the face of God and not the hand of God. And there's a big difference. And so, long story short, because there's so much to this story, but um, suddenly... I went to travel nursing, which I'd been looking into for three years, but it just wasn't the right time. And so God just kind of said, it's time. And something opened up and I got the job the same day. And I just took off. And, you know, God's done some suddenlies in my life like that. And whenever we can't do for ourselves, God does for us. And so he um, sent me away to get along with him. And I continued to do what I was doing, the first part of being away and alone. And I continued to be miserable and nervous and scared. And I had anxiety and just about my life and what was I doing? Like, where was I going? Why had I taken this road again? And um, so one morning I got on my face I just cried out to God and I just said, okay, like I'm done. I'm done. I, I need you. I want to be back. I want us to be back again. I want to see your glory again, Lord. I want to see your glory. And what do I need to do? And he said, um, I want you to go read the letter that I wrote you. And back in June, June 7th, 2020 God had wrote me a letter when I had asked him what had happened you know what had happened to me he wrote me a letter and from June to September um, I didn't really heed to it but it was it was on my mind I just did not let it um, change me and so I want to read something in Todd Smith's book, The Glory of God. If you haven't gotten that book, or you need to go get it. It is a, it's, it, it's, it's changing people's lives. But um, he says, God loves the smell of death. And this is the verse that it's wrapped around. For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy places with him who has a contrite and humble spirit. 
to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Isaiah 57, 15. That means that God comes close to the low in spirit. He comes close to the brokenhearted. He comes close to those who are, are, are seeking after God and who are so t really just tired of themselves and want to see God. He comes close to, to them. Him and his high places comes close to us who are low in spirit. So if you're low in spirit today, you cry out to God, he's coming. He's coming close to you. It says, um, he says, recently I cried out to God for an increase of his glory in my life. He immediately responded, increase your brokenness. I wasn't expecting that quick of a response and certainly not that straightforward of an answer. He quickly let me know he would love to give me more, but it came at a price. I have discovered there are no shortcut to revival and the glory of God comes at a high price. As the host pastor of the North Georgia Revival, I have learned nothing attracts God more than an individual being broken over his or her sinfulness. Tommy Tenney in his book, The God Chaser, said, The more death that God smells, the closer he can come. There is something about dying or burning flesh that God likes. I don't know about you, but to me, burning flesh is atrocious. Very few stenches in the world are more repulsive. However, the Bible says when the animal sacrifices were being burned on the altar, the Lord smelled a sweet, soothing aroma. And you can see Genesis 8.21, Exodus 29.18, Leviticus 1.17, and Ephesians 5.2. The burning of flesh is not repulsive to God, but he draws near it. Spiritually speaking, our flesh prevents God's glory from manifesting and limits the release of his full work of power in our life. However, when we crawl up on the altar and cry out for him to consume us with his holy fire, he burns the sinful debris. The more flesh he consumes, the more glory we walk in. This is painful and people, if possible, avoid it. And so I want to share with you the letter that God wrote me. I've got tons of letters. Um, that God has wrote me in my quiet time and my prayer time over the last 11 years. I have probably about 10 journals where I've journaled my whole uh, walk with God and just conversations with him and times where I would write him things and I would repent of my sins and, and then I would he would write me back and God does this. I don't know if you know this or if you have a relationship like this, but you can talk to God just like I'm talking to you. And you can write him and he'll write you back. And you learn how to hear his voice. And so you write down what the Spirit is saying to you. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And so I want to share with you this letter that he wrote me in June. Kelly, I can't take you where I want to take you because these things that are attached can't go with you in this place. The ways of the world don't belong in the ways of the kingdom. The two don't mix. I'm trying to bring people out of the ways of the world, not make it okay to stay there. My ways are always higher than the ways of the world. Everything operates in the spirit in heaven's kingdom. Nothing operates worldly in heaven. Seek heavenly things. Don't grow weary in doing good. Don't grow weary in being good. It may be boring at times, but it's safety. When you stay in me, peace follows. When you fear or have anxious feeling, it's because either you aren't abiding in me or obeying what I've told you. My desire for you is that you live long, safely, and abundantly in me. When you try to do both, it causes confusion and affliction. When you feel affliction, then seek me. I will show you what's causing it. Then it's up to you to resist it. When you don't resist it, then it stays and grows, causing it to cover up the good or the things of me. Remember, you are in this world, but not of this world. Don't conform. Why do you drink? Have you thought about that question? Why do you smoke? Both are not your friend. I have called you out. I love you, Kelly, and I will continue to seek you. But if you turn a deaf ear, then I can't prevent consequences. I've never left you. But things come in and drown out the voice that leads you into abundance in me. I have great things for you. Blessings and favor await you, but I'm not going to honor a divided life. I want all of you. All of you. This is why you don't see movement. Please, I have so much for you, Kelly. Remove those barriers you have allowed back into your life. 
I promise you will see a movement if you get rid of the barriers. I want to use you, but I can't to the fullness if you are divided. I'm here now that your ear is awake to me, waiting for you to turn back. You have justified why it's okay, but in all reality, it's not okay to be divided. We are in it together to defeat the enemy's tactics, but you can't defeat those you are on the same team with. But this team, whose team are you on these days? Yes, I have grace, a lot of it, but that doesn't mean you continue in destruction. You have the upper hand. How you use it will either create you or defeat you. I have a massive plan for you. I've called you to greatness, to change atmospheres, to break strongholds. You have a breaker anointing on you. But if you are bound, then you are limited. When you are limited, then it's not me, because I am a God who has no limitations. Whether you know it or not, you have many, many eyes on you for direction and way of life. It's the kind of anointing on you that will fall off if you don't follow me fully. You are anxious because you can see both endings. Don't let your flesh rule. I'm waiting on you. Everything I have for you is still here and available. Come get it, Kelly. It's yours. Kelly, you don't need these things you have been running to. Please come back to me fully. If you could see the life I have laid out for you, you would not be given these things a second thought. I want to be real and honest with you because it is life or death to your spirit, man. I believe you. I have placed my power in you. I have chosen you. Yes, you for partnership with me because I know who I've called you to be. Read this every day so that you can be reminded that my way is life. I came so you may have life more abundantly. That's a promise. You won't lack for nothing. Your family won't lack for nothing. You have so much fun when you are operating in your gifts. When you focus on other things, it brings unfulfillment to your life. Well, I have more of the fulfillment you are looking for. Come back to me, Kelly. You are my chosen vessel. One I can count on to carry my heart to the broken, lost, and lack. Will you let me use you to the fullness? Can I expand my kingdom through you? Can I count on you? This is a plea from me to have all of you so that you can experience me with greatness and abundance. I love you, my daughter. Come back, your father who has called you out. Um, that was a warning. And I knew it was a warning. It was a loving warning. God does give us warnings. And he, um, but he does it lovingly. He, you know, um, and so I just um, saw that and, you know, got excited about it. And then about a week or two, I think it just kind of just drizzled out again. And I get back to uh, get to North Georgia and, and he, that's the letter that he reminded me of. And um, so that morning after I read uh, the letter, and reading that letter a second time, it was like Jesus was sitting in front of me, reading it to me. I, I can't explain the feeling I had. I can't explain the touch on my life that morning. But there, it was a strong encounter with God. And I knew that I knew that I knew that he was pleading with me to listen. And... um because there's no telling what was down the road for me if I didn't listen. God loves us so much that he gives us warnings and he tries to he tries to tell us things and you know and uh, to keep us from harm, but we just we won't listen. <laughs> you know, we don't listen. Our flesh just our flesh takes over. It's hard, you know. It's hard um to fight our fleshly desires, but um the reward of 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 it is greater than the reward of a temporary fleshly um satisfaction, but um, in September, when I was in North Georgia that morning, I went and um, I said, what do you want me to do, God? And he said, I want you to pour out everything you have. So um, I poured out every bit of alcohol that I had, threw away all the little vapes that I had, and just I just threw it out. I said, all right, what else? And he said, I want you to, now I want you to drink me. And I had grape juice because I do communion quite often. And, and um, he said, go get communion. And so I got communion. And I consecrated myself to the Lord and said, okay, I'm done. Like, I don't care what the cost is. I don't care who I lose in the process. Um, I don't care what it takes. But 
Um, these last three years have been hell. Um, that just being distant and God never leaves us like he's always there, but we, 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 um, we run, we hide from him and, um, when we get into sin, we hide from him and, and so in, in ways. And so it's just, I've just, I've missed it. Like, it's not a good place to be. It's not a good place to be at all. And so, um, so I took communion and the encounter I had with God that day was so powerful. Um, and he he met me right where I was and his glory came upon me um, I felt the anointing um, placed back on, over my life and um, I was going to North Georgia Revival and that um, I went and got in the water the next night and repented um, you know, God knows when we are in true repentance you know, we say, I'm sorry all the time. You know, I'm sorry. But God knows when our heart is in true repentance. And you'll know when your heart is in true repentance. Repentance. It's like we grieve the, the sins that we've been doing. We have grieve the way our, um, our soul has been. We grieve the disobedience that we've been towards God. And, and that's a good place to be, though. I, you know, I want to encourage you that if you're in a place of where you're looking at yourself and you're seeing the, the ugly it's a great place to be because God can do so much with that. Uh, uh, God's going <laughs> to, that's a good place to be. So get ready. So if you're in a place of repentance, a place of being tired of yourself and get ready for the glory of God to come upon you and, and start really um, empowering you because you are, you are at a place where you're saying, okay, God, I'm sick and tired of myself. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm ready for you. Like you're, you have opened up the door to receive God, and so He's going to come in like, um, like fire, and revive your soul. So, um, get ready. Um, so anyway, He, uh, when I that day He, um, He reminded me of the story of Samson, and how Samson had it. But he lost it because he was deceived. And so it was, God was telling me, you know, you're going to lose it if you're deceived. If you're not, if you're not in tune to me, if you're not in tune to my spirit, and if you're not getting these things, you know, out of your life, then you're going to be deceived and you're going to lose it like Samson did. And it scared me. I mean, it literally scared me. I, um, you know, there's a, a reverent fear that we should have in God. And um, when God was re revealing these things to me, it scared me. And I realized that God was trying to save me from uh, the destruction that was coming. And so the letter, uh, this is what I wrote on 912. Today I, re I re reread the letter from God and it pierced my soul and separated bone from marrow, truth from lies, and life from death. I poured out all alcohol and threw away my vape. I asked the Lord to restore me, renew me, and strengthen me. Build our relationship again where it's nobody but me and Him. I'm letting go of the things that have hindered me. I've asked for my atmosphere to be cleansed and safe, that He would restore my character and power in the kingdom. I don't want to be a Samson. I want to be loyal, committed, and live with integrity to my God, and His promise to me is fulfillment resources, abundance, protection, long life, safety, a movement, greatness, to change atmospheres, break strongholds, life for my spirit, and lack for nothing, not only for me, but for my family. I took communion, and today starts a restored relationship with my Father in heaven, only committed to him for this season. No ministry in the church or leadership roles. When the time is right, I will reopen doors to greatness and total fulfillment. Just walk with me day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. Enjoy this journey, Kelly. Fulfillment precedes you. And he gave me this verse, Luke 1, 45. And blessed spiritually, which means spiritually fortunate. Spiritually fortunate. People take blessed out of context, but spiritually fortunate and favored by God is she who believed and confidently trusted that there would be a fulfillment of the things that were spoken to her by the angel sent from the Lord. 
Now, I put, you know, her and myself in, in there in the verse, but you can read it, Luke 145. And, and um, so I just wanted to share with you because I'm an open person and I'm transparent and I try to be transparent because life is not always great. Life is hard. It's tough. Um, the Lord says that because he suffered, we would suffer too. Um, and there's a lot of suffering that goes on in um, walking with the Lord. It is not all, um, it's just not all fun and games at times. There's a lot of, there's, you know, there's death. There's sickness, there's um, hurt, pain, there's um, things that are done to us in our life that cause us pain and we just don't understand it. Um, but, but we can always, during all of this, call on God and just receive his comfort and receive his friendship and follow his commands in whatever season that we're in, whatever that looks like. And so I just want to encourage you today. Because even, you know, the closest of followers fall. And, but um, they just get up. You know, you get up and continue to fight for your, your spirit. Continue to fight the good fight. And, um, you know, I know that my life is not about me. Uh, my life is about those around me. And what I do affects those around me. And what I do um, affects things in the spirit. And... If I want to see things in my family um, happen, um, in my husband, in my children, then I'm going to fight. And I have to keep myself pure and clean, pure and holy. The Lord says, uh, walk pure and holy in all that you do, because I am pure and holy. And so I have to strive to um, stay that way and get rid of those things that are... Um, that are clouding me and so because it affects my family and by God my family will walk in the promises of God they will walk and fulfill the promises of God and I don't want their you know innocent blood to be on my hands and so um, my number one mission and my number one ministry is to see that my uh my family um, walks in the fullness of God and is protected to the best of my ability. I know that at any given moment, something could happen. I know that at any given moment, things could change because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But if I have anything to do with it, I'm going to put up shields in the spirit through my prayer life over my family. And I'm going to call out the God's plan over my, my, my family's life. And so I have to die to my flesh. I have to die to my flesh and do the things in the spirit that God's call, called me to do. So search yourself. Seek out those things that are hindering your life. Sin hinders your life. And sin is, look, is in so many forms. It ain't just substance or or whatever sin is pride sin is um unforgiveness um sin is bitterness i mean it, it sin is there's so many things sin is disobedience is sin and so there's so many things that you can you have to search your own heart you know i had to search mine and and, and god revealed to me and still reveals to me those things that i need to rid myself of so you have to search your own heart and um and see what god is saying to you but I promise you that when you seek him and you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. And he draws near to the brokenhearted and he draws near to the contrite spirit. And so um, anyway, don't miss out on just don't miss out on that relationship with God is so empowering. God wants you to be fulfilled, but he's a gentleman and if you choose to do what you want to do, he's going to let you. But don't be surprised when you face consequences. You know, it's uh, God tries to keep us in a safe place under his wing. But if we choose to get out from underneath that, then that's our choice. 
Um, so I want to just, you know, encourage you to, you know, chase after God, chase after God and he loves you and there's nothing, nothing that's too deep for God. He can reach down to the deepest, deepest part of your soul and he can change and restore everything that has been lost to you and, and, and make good out of it. And so, uh, let him use you. Let him use you. Let him use the pain. Let him use the things that you've done in your life, the sin in your life. Let him use it for the glory of his, of him. And so, anyway, that's my encouragement for you this morning. That's my, uh, transparency. And, um, hope you're, hope you get something out of it. And I'm always available to reach out to. And, um, talk to or whatever so i love you guys and i'm so thankful for my relationship with the lord and that he has not given up on me so be blessed